Thank you. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are descending from flight level 300 down to flight level 180 into Anchorage en route from Juneau. Got a little ice on the windshield here, but nothing uh, problematic. Checking the wing regularly. Seeing hardly any on the wing to worry about. Um, getting ready to turn left to runway for the approach to runway 15 at Anchorage. Going to plug in our ILS frequency for runway 15, which I've confirmed as 111.75. Swap that over. There we go. And uh, we're in that sharp left turn right now. Kind of nice to finally have some weather. We've been flying mostly around the American West lately. And as a consequence, the uh, weather in the West of uh, Western part of the U.S. has been uh, clear, uh, unfortunately, really clear. So much so that it's got these fires going. So it's interesting doing this approach. It's so immersive that it actually feels cold, which is fascinating when you think about it. Uh, because, I don't know, it's probably... 85 degrees outside right now in my yard. Pretty impressive that they've been able to do it. Along the route here, we uh, made a little video just as we were en route, uh, where we flew over Mount St. Elias, I think it was, and Mount Bear. It was pretty cool. So we're at 18,000 feet now. Now the big question is, will we be ignored by ATC again? This has been an issue. We have descended to where they told us to descend to, 18,000 feet. I'm showing it's 15 minutes from the airport right now. We're doing 100 and 191 knots. True airspeed is 252. Cold outside, minus 11 at this altitude. ILS frequency is plugged in. Air three whiskey, Bravo descend and maintain 4,000 feet keep speed below 250 knots. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet keep speed below 250 knots. Day or tree whiskey, Bravo. All right, so we've been cleared down to 4,000. This approach, I looked at it topographically, you can see what I mean. It's not mountainous, or over the mountains. This is not a mountainous approach. We're at transition altitude, so we'll switch our barometer over to 2, 9 or 9 or 7, apparently. No, 3013. Hey, this is interesting. The ForeFlight app that I've got says that the nearest altimeter is 3012. And uh, I pressed the B key because I didn't have that altimeter information from ATC, and it's 3013, so that's nifty. It's accurate for once. Anyway, cleared down to 4,000. The approach plates that we're using, or approach plate that I am using for runway 15, shows that the waypoint card right there, C A R. DD. At this waypoint, we should be at 3,000 feet. And at Kansi, we should be at 1,600 feet. Right now, we're flying from Tango Kilo Alpha to Croto Kilo Romeo Oscar Tango Oscar, and then Bravo Golf Quebec. So, 
it's looking promising right now for our approach. I have to admit, I, I'm kind of eager to actually fly in some weather. I'm actually feeling grateful that the game came out when it did because the weather has been pretty cooperative and I haven't had any... Uh, I've had a few night approaches and that little bit of... A little bit of weather through Louisiana. We, we One three two decimal tree for day or tree whiskey Bravo. The after effects of Hurricane Anchorage Laura. Anchorage Center day or November tree four tree whiskey Bravo is out of fourteen thousand seven hundred feet for four thousand feet. Day or November tree four tree whiskey Bravo Anchorage Center continue to chrono as planned. Altimeter tree zero decimal one four. One three zero one four. We're at three zero one three right now. So we'll adjust our barometer to 3014. Anyway, haven't really had to deal with any weather of significance, which I'm hoping is good because I'm getting a lot of time to practice. <laughs> because I know that inevitably I'm going to be doing some pretty dicey approaches, takeoffs and so forth as uh, winter sets in, which I'm looking forward to. I enjoy the challenge. But I have to tell you, I have developed an affection for this plane, my N343 Whiskey Bravo. And I've flown this plane all over the U.S. Uh, all over. West Coast, East Coast, Deep South, Northern Minnesota, Boise, Flagstaff, Oregon, you name it. Uh, and now Alaska. And uh, I've done it without incident. It's been kind of, it's been more than kind of fun. It's been a lot of fun be able to stick with the same airplane, you feel a certain degree of investment in it. Uh, obviously much cheaper than the real Dayer 3, Dayer 930, TBM 930. Had a lot of fun to, uh, to turn on, to, uh, to, to be able to use the same aircraft over and over again on a sort of ongoing journey said before, I don't spawn in random cities. There's nothing wrong with that. I know, that's, I know that's a big part of the appeal for a lot of people. It's For me, I like to travel from one city to another and start a new flight exactly where I left off from the last one. Uh, to apply the rules I've learned and to see them bear fruit is uh, satisfying. I enjoy it. got a master caution alarm that our inertial separator was on. I do need to do some research as to whether or not the inertial separator is used on landing. I, based on what I understand its function is, I would suspect that it probably is used to take off and landing. So I'm going to keep it on. And when I flew into Juno, I left it on, but that was because I forgot. Since then, I've done a little bit of snooping around about what it is and how it works and uh, so I didn't notice any adverse effects from leaving it on so we'll leave it on uh, and in point of fact it's actually kind of handy in slowing you down that's one thing about this TBM man it just is a rocket likes to really likes to move so you see right here on our PFD our primary flight display we're at 8,600 feet, down to four. Three, whiskey, Bravo, contact Anchorage Center on 133.7. miles from Croto. 133.7 for day or tree whiskey, Bravo. That DIS tells us Anchorage our distance. Anchorage Center day or November, tree four tree whiskey, Bravo is at 8,400 feet, descending 4,000 feet. From our next waypoint. Day or November, right there. tree four tree whiskey, Bravo, Anchorage Center, continue to Croto as planned. Altimeter tree zero decimal one four. Now we're starting a left turn, you see? I'm showing us um, about eight, nine minutes at our current speed from the airport. And as I said, this is all flat, you can see. And then out there in the distance, those are the mountains we flew in over. We came in like this. Air tree whiskey, Bravo, contact Anchorage approach on 118.6. 118.6 day or tree whiskey bravo. 
Anchorage approach day or November 343 Whiskey Bravo is at 7,100 feet, descending 4,000 feet. Day or November 343 Whiskey Bravo, Anchorage approach, continue to Tom as planned. Altimeter 30, decimal 1 tree. Day or tree, Whiskey Bravo, you are tree 2 miles north. Descend and maintain 3,300 feet, expect ILS runway 15 approach via Yun transition. Clear to Yun. Descend and maintain 3,300 feet. Expect ILS runway 15 approach via Yun transition. Clear to Yun Day or Tree Whiskey Bravo. All right, so we're good. Uh, this is what I did not have happen at Juno yesterday. So we are cleared for the approach. Just again, constantly, you always want to constantly be checking uh, your instruments, your distances, your bearings, your spatial orientation. It's not is critically important in weather like this. You, know, you get some high clouds, you know, it's like a little, I don't know, radiation fog down there on the ground, but it's uh, useful because when you're flying this type of an approach in instrument meteorological conditions, that is clouds, you know, you always have to be aware of where you are relative to everything else. And uh, only by rigid adherence and attention to your, your instruments to your instruments can you achieve that again they bring you in lower than they need to this is a common theme they're telling me to expedite my descent to 3300 keep in mind this is where card right here let's zoom in on it this waypoint c a r d d card i need to be at 3000 feet when i cross this well, I'm at 5,700 feet right now, and I'm still, according to this, three and a half miles, which you can see over here, is one minute, 57 seconds, to the next waypoint. The four card, which is, I don't know, Yon or Yohan, whatever. So the distance between Yohan and card is going to be more than enough to allow us to be at 3,000, as we should be. Now look. Air tree whiskey bravo, please expedite your descent to 3,300 feet. There's the runway. I just love it. I just love when you follow your instruments, pop up, and you see you're exactly where you're supposed to be doing what you need to be doing. It's great. So what I'm going to do now is uh, switch over to um, our ILS. We're on final. There's the runway way out ahead of us. So let's switch the, using the PFD home screen, let's switch nav source to nav one, and boom. Air tree whiskey bravo descend and maintain 3,000 feet. See, now they want us 3,000. Descend and maintain 3,000 feet day or tree whiskey bravo. Which is the altitude required for CARDD. So, but now it's, uh, let the autopilot handle this part. You'll notice, uh, again, I've talked about this before in previous videos, but again, reconfirm ISB, IBSC, India Bravo Sierra Charlie 111.75. That is the radio frequency for that runway. This is the glide slope, and this green diamond is telling me that I am underneath it. In other words, that I need to be higher than I am. Now, everything I've learned about glide slope approaches is that you fly in under it to grab it, and which is what we're doing. And if you notice, this will drop as we continue our approach. I will press APR, which stands for approach. And now, As soon as we grab the glide slope, uh, it'll the, the autopilot will handle the descent. Right now, change our altitude down to 3,000, which is what they said. Remember, we need to be at 3,000 feet at CAR, C-A-R-D, and we're at 3,500 feet right now. And we are specifically 51 seconds from reaching CAR, so we're not going to have any problems with that. 
we have the ILS, we do not have the glide slope. If I deactivate vertical speed control, go back to nav, and then approach, I'm waiting for it to grab the glide slope. It has not. This is not the crisis. This is nothing to panic about. Remember, if you lose the luxury of having the AP guide you in, you can still follow your instruments. I mean, in theory, I could literally land this plane just by looking at this. Wait till this starts to drop. You can see it's moving down right now. See it's starting to descend? Keep this CDI, this green... Air tree, Whiskey Bravo, you are one three miles north of Anchorage. Contact Anchorage Tower on 118 Decimal Tree when inbound. Tower on 118 Decimal down. Tree, Day Gear Tree, Whiskey Bravo. down, right now. Let's confirm that. Anchorage Tower, Day or November, Tree 4 Tree, Whiskey Bravo, one two miles north inbound, ILS runway, one five approach. Day or November, Tree 4 Tree, Whiskey Bravo, Anchorage Tower. Cleared ILS runway, one five approach. Altimeter tree zero decimal one tree wind calm. So you see this green diamond dropping? Cleared ILS runway one five approach day or tree whiskey bravo. That's good. But anyway, you could literally fly it just keeping this CDI course deviation indicator straight so that it matches with the arrow above and the above and below. And we'll keep this green diamond right here in the middle. You could, in theory, uh, land it. I mean, that's that's how it works. Happily, we're not going to have to do that. Now, in real aviation, they use what's called minimum. So if you can't see the runway at a certain point... Oh, we have the glide slope now, by the way. We have the glide slope. If you can't see the runway at a certain altitude, you have to uh, do a go-around or a missed approach. But we do have the runway. There it is, right in front of us. And by the way, do you see how this now says GS? Glide slope. That means it has now not only grabbed the localizer, but the glide slope. So we are on official final now. And you see this green diamond? What'd I tell you? Dead center. It's not up here anymore. It's right where it's supposed to be. All right. Okay, let's get our landing lights on. They are on. And let's get our... Make sure everything else is on. Oh, somehow the lights went off there. Uh, okay, lights are all good. Reconfirm that. Pulse lights... Yes, okay, good. And landing light? Yes, okay, good. So one thing I take very seriously on situations like this is the air airspeed. I'm going to take the aircraft now. Monitoring your airspeed is serious business. Flaps. Uh, because if you just sort of inadvertently let it uh, drop and it drops too low, you will stall and fall out of the sky. So I have managed to, whiskey, Bravo, clear to land runway one five. Managed to avoid that so far. Clear and to land runway one five day or tree whiskey bravo. I intend to continue avoiding it. Look at those beautiful trees. Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta not be a sightseer. Gotta land this aircraft safe. One more notch of flaps. Now you remember, keep looking at that glide slope. You see how that green diamond right there has started to climb back up? That means we need to climb back up. Two mile final for runway 15, confirmed. Look at our airspeed, 89. It's fine, but you look away and you'll live to regret it, or you won't live to regret it. Here's our runway. There's a poppy right to the left, white, red, red, red. That means we're slightly low. Not a problem, not a problem. Reconfirm, three in the green on landing gear. Airspeed's 86, that's fine. Keeping an eye on that green diamond I mentioned. Because I am hand flying it now, we're no longer autopilot.
still one white. Now we got two white, two red on the poppy, which means our altitude is perfect on our three degree light slope. And if you notice the green diamond, that is consistent. Here's be 90 knots, about 85. Now we got, you see it's got three whites, 500 feet. Three whites, one red, that means we're a tiny bit too high now, which again is consistent with that green diamond down there on the PFD. Back to two white, two red. Right on the center line. Idle, idle on the throttle. Oof. That's our, a little harder than I like it, but I have the uh, settings at hard, so if I damage the aircraft, they would tell me uh, uh, it was a more than acceptable landing. Reverse thrusters. Such a long runway, it's probably unnecessary. It's interesting, there's a almost a roll to the... Uh, I don't know if that's coming across in a video, but th this... <laughs> I actually didn't even need to break. This runway is so damn long, 10,000 feet. And uh, there's a, almost an undulation. I don't know if it's, if it's perceptible. That's really cool. That is a new feature, as far as I know. It was not present in previous versions of Flight Sim, where, uh, you know, the runway was just flat. It was like our landing on a ruler. This thing is... I'm working on it. This thing uh, rolls, I suppose, just like a real, real terrain would. All right, exiting runway... Stop here at the limit. All right, and we'll contact ground. Contact ground one two one point nine zero. Taxi to parking. Anchorage ground. Day or November. Bringing our flaps. Three four three whiskey Bravo taxi to parking. Day or November three four three whiskey Bravo taxi. Kill the landing lights. Parking using taxiway Charlie Alpha. Kill the pulse. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Charlie Alpha Day or Tree Whiskey Bravo. Follow the blue arrows to parking. Well, that was a fun approach. That was really neat. Um, boy, this is feels like we're rolling around. Ooh. Ooh, what are they, speed bumps here at Anchorage? I've actually landed at this airport in real life. Went up and uh, spent a week in Kenai, which is not... Well, I was going to say it's not far from Anchorage. In Alaska, everything's far. But uh, it was a long drive from Anchorage to Kenai. And uh, what unbelievably beautiful country. God, it was pretty wild being there in July because the sun was out so late. It was cool. Like 10:30 or 11 o'clock at night, as I recall, caught a beautiful 33-pound king salmon that they prepared for me, and I took home frozen, which was phenomenal. Went down to Homer also, and uh, caught some halibut. The ocean. It is this area right here. This, this is the Cook Inlet. Cook Inlet. That is where... To call it an inlet makes it sound like it's, you know, like this little bay. It's 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 gigantic. Uh, 
Uh, and boy, I tell you, it was rough seas. It was really bouncing around in there like a washing machine. But I did not get seasick, I will say. I did not get seasick. I loved it up there. I really, I really did. I'd like to go back. Ever been a cruise ship kind of guy, but I'm going to have to deviate here, otherwise I'm going to take out this <laughs> airport equipment. Might want to move there, bud. Uh, but it was uh, really beautiful. Uh, oh, there's more lights in the middle of the taxiway. Oh, come on, Microsoft. Thank God they don't cause damage. That would really irritate me if, uh, if it somehow damaged my airplane. All right. It doesn't, though, so... Hey, what, this is not... If that's the worst problem I'm encountering, I should be happy. Okay, hanging left. I see our guys over there. Love that differential braking, man. What a difference that makes. Sometimes I find it a little tricky to navigate these... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. What? Okay, I think I have to go around. Because if I go in the way that they're suggesting I go in, I'll kill that guy. So let's try this. You ready? Love that differential braking for the sharp turns. Alright. Oh! Almost got it. I just didn't want to turn that guy into ground beef. All right, that's that. Okay, parking brake. Engine cutoff, flaps are already up. We confirm that, pitot heats off. Get our light, taxi light off, pulse already off. Nav, strobe, PP trim off. Fuel selector back to manual. Fuel cut off. Deep. Depressurize. Turn that initial separator off now. Obviously, don't need that anymore. Don't need our heater. Although it is uh, 11 degrees out here, it's cooler than I'm used to. I haven't felt 11 degrees in <laughs> months. Months. You have no idea. If you live in Southern California, you understand. But, or in Arizona, I suppose. I know that it's like that there, too. They go six months where it doesn't drop below 85 or 90 or more. All right. Well, that was a fun approach. Really fun. I was going to fly from Juneau to Dutch Harbor. I'm a Deadliest Catch fan, so I kind of wanted to land there. But I looked at the route, and it's, I mean, it's just like everything in Alaska. It's gigantic. So it was a huge long flight, like 1,100 miles, which this aircraft is capable of, but I wasn't capable of. So we are done with a nice, safe, uh, successful approach and landing at Anchorage, Ted Stevens International. That's that.